Ah, okay. So now, I'm starting to unravel the mystery here. What I did was I used my dividers here and I set set them and checked the distance from. Uh, you see these two holes here. One of these holes is the threaded hole that's used just for removing this cover, and the other hole is the hole that the pin rides in. And what I did was I checked the distance from where the hole that the pin rides in to this hole and verified that it was equal to the distance from this pin to this hole. Then I checked it on this side, same thing. So this dimension, this dimension, this dimension, this dimension, all the same. Good. Then I checked from this hole to the next hole and started comparing it and found out that if I check from if I check from this hole the, uh, just put the dividers just on the very edge of that hole and set it so that it reaches just the edge of the next hole that matches on this side but then watch what happens when I try and go from the edge of this hole to the next hole quite a big difference right there and that is equal on this side and this side so these two holes are further apart than these two holes these two holes are further apart than these two holes so this is not symmetrical therefore I shouldn't be able to switch this around remember I was talking about this in the front or this in the back well if this is in the front for instance right now if I flip this 180 degrees, now all of a sudden my larger distances are on the wrong side. So I've got to figure out where on top of that head the larger hole spacing is and make sure that... So I'm just going to scratch a little L on there. That's going to look like it's going to be for left. Yeah, sorry, right, I know what it's for. Larger spacing is what I wanted to know. All right, so the large, and I also know the larger spacing is opposite where this slot is. Yeah, the larger spacing is definitely on the back end here, which means that the slot has to be in the front which is where it was when I first put this back together and didn't have a problem lining it up. So that make so that explains that explains how you go about putting this cover on and making sure that it's on correctly. The two pins are going to lock it in either this way or that way and the fact that you're not going to be able to get the screws to go in uh, will uh, also tell you that you got to have it. The slot's got to be in the front. And also to make my life a little easier I have now Put the pin, took the pins out of the cover and put the pins into the head. Just gonna double check, but yeah, my L's are where I expected them to be, so that slot definitely is in the front. That's it. Well, not quite, but now I've got to put the handle on because I've got to uh, worry about the problem of that bearing pulling out of its carrier on the top. Hopefully that's not changed anything. This should still be... I had this over here like in the low speed position. If I get this all set and running correctly, I have to, if I have to reposition this handle, that's small potatoes. For the time being, I'll just put two screws in the handle. Kitty corner across from each other so that they'll still have some clamping effect on that bearing, but not. I won't have to take all four of them out. Position this. I'm just feeling with my finger if I can. The washers are loose, and I know it's not, but. These Allen screws are tight tolerance of those holes, it seems. They uh, have a loose fit. That uh, should do it. Oh, no. Alright, now. Should be able to get a couple of these screws. Stuck. 
started in those holes. And I still have the mystery of figuring, I'm going to have to figure out, oh, that's the one. I still have the mystery, I'm going to have to figure out what the, uh, the two screws I have left that are larger are for. Three of these in a triangle pattern. They still have to mess around with something here, like trying to refloat the head. Those of you who haven't seen my other videos, stumped across this video. What I'm talking about by floating the head is a procedure that was actually recommended to me. I thought it was one of my YouTuber commenters, but I actually realized afterwards. These videos hadn't been up when I got that comment. Uh, forum in the Practical Machinist website posted a question about this problem, looking for advice. And somebody who owns one of these mills named Greg was kind enough to offer some advice. He said when his new mill, his 847, was shipped to him, he had a problem with it going in the high range. When he called the technical assistance department, they told him that the, uh, he needed to float the head, and they explained that was just a simple procedure. And uh, he said, basically, what you do is you loosen up these screws on this cover, and you run the mill, and while it's in alignment, then you tighten it down, I guess. Because that, that, I guess there's a little bit of play in there. I'm kind of surprised because these alignment pins are kind of close tolerance, but. Apparently, what it is. Anyways, now I am in high range. Until it's high range, because I've got this speed selector level all the way over here, and uh, so that was uh, supposedly uh, about 600 RPM. Not working. 
I got the VFD at around 1.6 hertz, so I'm actually spinning this really slowly, seeing if that would help get this to come out. It's not doing anything for me. It's possible there's still some rust or corrosion that's causing part of the binding problem, but the thing was, this thing was working beautifully when I had this all out, so that's why I don't think that's it. I think something else is going on. Take this whole thing apart again. I think I'm going to, have to take this whole thing apart again. All right, guys. I was down here before, and the battery on the cam camera died, and so you didn't see what I went and did next, which is basically tore the whole thing apart again, and even went a little further because I really didn't like the way this was feeling. I kept playing with this lever and realizing that it's like, oh boy, you know, it seems like it would be smooth and all of a sudden you would turn it a certain way and it would just bind again. And I said to myself, I bet you there's still something going on inside there with, you know, there was rust in there. I knew that corrosion had gotten in there. Couldn't quite see what I needed to get to uh, because that big bowl gear was in the way. I just kind of sprayed stuff through a straw underneath there and, you know, it started, to, I freed it up and it started to work. But, that really wasn't the right way to, to go about doing this. I really should have done this in the first place, the first time around when I had it apart. All right, so for those of you who didn't see my earlier videos, basically what happens is uh, first that whole, this whole assembly comes out as a unit. All right, like this. When you pull this out, which pulling this out, it's kind of a tight fit doesn't make much sense to me but I'm gonna clean this up too before we put it all back together. <clears throat> it was pretty clean already but I think we're gonna get every ounce of uh, every last remnant of corrosion off of that inside piece there to see if we can't figure out what that rubs on so much when it goes in. Then I got once I got that out uh, of course first I took the motor off uh, got the belt off that assembly out, got the belt out, then took the whole housing here off. Once I got the housing off, I got this shield out again. Once I got that shield out, I could see that big gear inside here. And uh, that's where I stopped last time because it looked like it was going to be more involved than I wanted to do at the time. And the gear wasn't going to come out until this pulley that goes on here was, was off, which is this pulley right here. And this is the pulley that uh, that timing belt actually drives, and it has to do with the back gear. And to get this off, first I try to pull her. This has got such little clearance between the bottom edge here, you can't get a puller underneath it there. I tried grabbing the top here to pull it put very little pressure on it and realize that this edge is very thin metal and it's not gonna not gonna work that way. So uh, oh that was the other thing too. Getting this screw out. Okay of course trying to unscrew this and this whole thing's trying to turn but as luck would have it my largest strap wrench was just large enough to get around and get a good grab on this so I was able to get this screw out. And then I got a couple of screwdrivers underneath there and tapped them in and, and wedging action popped that off. So I lucked out there. That wasn't stuck on there too badly. Once I get that off, I realized I could go after pulling the gear. Well, the gear is held on by this special spanner nut. And I want to point this out to anybody who goes to take one of these apart. There are two little locking mechanisms on this spanner nut. One of which, simply that the nut is split and then there's an Allen screw right going through here that tightens this. So obviously when this is tightened down, it's going to not want to un unscrew. An added measure 
to lock this down, and I'm not even quite sure how it works, is they put a slot in here, and they've got an Allen screw here that's tightened down here. I think what happens is I think when this Allen screw goes in here and it bottoms out on this, it starts to actually push this wall in a little bit and locks this nut. So you gotta loosen that screw and that grub screw before you can even attempt to take this off. And then even then, I didn't have a spanner to fit this, but luckily putting a punch in there and giving it a tap, I got this to break free. Which is fortunate also because that also had a lot of rust in that area. But there was also a lot of that uh, NC45, that ZEP uh, penetrating stuff that I had sprayed all over this thing. Once I got that out, then I wanted to pull the gear, that big bull gear. So on top of the gear sits this thing. And then there's the gear itself. So I was spraying through these holes to get to that mechanism down inside. Couldn't really see how much corrosion was in there other than with the flashlight. Well, as luck would have it, my puller, this puller right here, actually was able to grab these two holes right here. But then the problem was, of course, I had the drawbar in the way. So I loosened my uh, drawbar and I uh, knocked the collet out and took the collet out and then now I was able to slide the whole drawbar out. So I removed my drawbar completely. So here's my drawbar assembly. Okay. <clears throat> Once I got the drawbar out, I went to put the puller on here. And when I was tightening the puller, I realized this shaft was just moving down in the center. And I realized, oh, the quill's actually going down. So what I ended up doing was I extended the quill. Let's see if I, if I bring the quill back up. You see this shaft right here? You can't put the puller on there because when you tighten the, the puller, all this does is push this down. But if you run this all the way down, okay, and then uh, engage the quill lock, keep it down. So what I did, <clears throat> now I've got something solid I could put. This spacer I had right here fits right on there. And that's how I pulled the gear off. And that got me to the point I am at now. And that's where I had quit and decided to charge the camera battery because I didn't want to go any further until I get a chance to show you guys this. So that is what I found inside once I got that all uh, taken apart. You can see that that is loaded with corrosion. Most of it is just on the inside of the casting, but you can tell by the, the way the corrosion is laid out and everything that that was, that was water that was just sitting in there, that was pooled in there. So now I can see this mechanism much more clearly and how this works. And so what you got is you got this drum assembly and I can actually see a bearing in there. Now the bearing is sealed, so it should be, should still be good, but we'll, we'll check it out when I get it out. So what I want to do is I want to take this drum assembly out and I think, I think the way to do that, I see a couple of Allen screws right there. Let's see what I can figure out here. All right, so there's a uh, Allen screw, a grub screw right there, or a set screw, right on this. And, and I just found out, it was actually kind of loose, but I found out if you tighten it, it actually impedes this shaft from being able to move smoothly. So that's interesting. So that can't be tightened down, bottomed out. But I'm assuming that if I back it off enough, that shaft will slide out this way. I'm hoping it slides out just enough to disengage this pin from this drum. Well, that, uh, well, that did allow me to move this out that far, but that's not far enough for that pin right there to disengage this drum. So that's not gonna be this, the answer. 
So I think what I gotta do is I gotta take this shaft all the way out. I gotta take this piece right here off. Looks like there's a pin right there driven in that holds that pin in. But I think the, the better move is gonna be to take, looks like there's a pin right here driven in that holds this on the end of this arm, on the end of the shaft. So I think if I drive that pin out, then with this loose, I think I could pull this whole shaft right out. Well, it's supper time. But I just drove that pin out. Having just the right size punch is uh, just the ticket. And the pin fell out, but I didn't have to worry about losing it because it just fell into this little void in the casting right here. So now, this lever should be able to just come right on out. And it does. And now if I tilt this up and out, there's a... Uh, a little void in the casting there. It almost looks like it was designed for the purpose of, uh, yeah, looks like I gotta pull this up. Well, there we go. So there we go. There's the pin, comes out. Clean that off. All right, so that's what it looks like cleaned up. The pin's in good condition. I'm noticing this Allen screw that goes all the way through it, and it's got some uh, yellow, uh, almost like a locking, thread locking product or something on there. Um, or something like to seal it to show that it was like set at the factory and then hasn't been changed. I just tried turning it and it's pretty tight. It appears to just go right straight through. And it doesn't have any purpose as far as locking the shaft that I just took out. So I actually think this is some sort of a stop. I think that this can only go down so far before this bottom edge right here hits the bottom of the casting. Now that's interesting to me because I was noticing how, and it's been kind of annoying to me that this shaft has been able to go down past here like this. And once it gets down there, it's kind of hard to, it gets like stuck. And I'm wondering whether or not I, I should adjust this so that it can't go down that far. So I have to consider that on reassembly. Right now, I'm more interested in taking this out to see what it looks like underneath there. Not really much going on here. It's a, it's a double gear on a uh, spline shaft. Huh. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go have my lunch. Lunch, huh. I'm gonna go have my supper. And then maybe I'll come back down here after supper and change the camera angle and give you guys a look-see. Still don't see anything that would indicate why this would be hanging up as bad as it was. All of this rust that's on the outside here doesn't even look like it would have any bearing on the operation. 